look at camera design, we definitely see a progression from the manual cameras of the early 1960s of metering to um, aperture priority and semi-automatic in the 80s. And in the 90s, we saw, the 1990s, we saw an increase in far more automotive type of cameras with um, automatic focusing becoming the absolute norm. And a camera which sort of um, justifies and is very much office type is this Pentax from 1992. And the camera I'm going to talk about now is the Z10. Now, the Z10 was the basic in the Z series of cameras. Um, this series of cameras is um, I think an interesting progression. It's not quite to the what I would call the end of the film cameras where you saw a cameras which are incredibly similar to the modern Discord um, SLRs. Um, this was a sort of progression towards that and it was aimed at the um, beginner or sort of um, amateur photographer who wanted to move on from a compact camera but wanted a camera that they didn't have to think about too much. So very much looks like an SLR, is an F SLR, but is very straightforward to use. Now I'm going to go through some of the detail and then I'm going to talk about my experience from actually using the camera. So. One of the um, things people like about Pentax is, is the Pentax K. The Pentax K is a bayonet mount which was sort of introduced from, I think it was 1972, um, maybe a little bit earlier, and it has been um, a very um, popular mount, sometimes used by other manufacturers. The mount has altered in that it, um, the automatic settings for aperture priority. And in this case, we have, I think, I can't remember the precise series of lens, but we have on the lens, we do have a A4 automatic there, and we have the aperture for manual. What I find slightly um, odd about this camera is that the two modes are program which is an office mode then we have manual which is very useful if we want all those um, um, user settings however we haven't got aperture priority and when you think that Pentax cameras basically progressed through the aperture priority system um, it just seems a bit um, incongruous to me that it has been missed out. So let's look at the basic um, fundamentals of this camera. The design is very ergonomic. It's a moderately bulky camera. We have this support at the front here. We have the main button here and on the top we have the on off. So that's the first thing we have to think about. We have in front of the on of a self timer. If we want to use the flash, we can just pop the flash up there and it will go into flash mode immediately. Um, we have a manual and auto focus button here. The button here is for taking the lens off. Oops, gently do it, does it? This might seem a bit of a mystery button here, but it's actually a button where you could set the zoom lens at a certain focal length. So, and it would only work on certain lenses, but you set the focal length. So let's say you've got a zoom lens between 35 and 80, and you want it at 50. You can set that point so that when you're shooting, it will immediately go to that point where you press that button. So for a lot of lenses, that button is redundant. Now, going to the top of the camera, the modes of use, right? We select the mode by, it's not immediately obvious how you set the mode. At the moment, you can see this is on manual. It's on manual because the, on the lens, 
and you can't really see this clearly but on the lens I am on the apertures so at the moment I'm on 5.6 as soon as you put it on the apertures the camera goes into manual mode so it's on 5.6 there if I look through the viewfinder I have to take off my glasses I see a minus that means that the shutter speed is not fast enough if I look at the top the shutter speed at the moment is a quarter one fourth um, now it, by altering the shutter speed on the plus minus here I will then eventually get a naught in the middle when I've got a naught in the middle then the camera is the aperture is correct so I've now got a naught okay so you've got a minus in the viewfinder you've got like a circle which is the correct exposure and you've got a plus so you've got over exposed under exposed and can take so that is the camera on manual mode simply to put it on automatic mode you move the aperture dial to a for automatic and the camera then automatically goes on program mode and on the top here you see p for program um, there's a use for um, plus and minus um, I suppose a compensation if you want to go down the stop or up the stop when you are in program mode the camera I haven't got a film in here it is fully automatic in loading and obviously winds back automatically it is DX coded so that means the camera automatically selects the ISO of the film when you put it in I assume it defaults to 100 ISO when you aren't using the camera interestingly the hot shoe is on the side and not on the top it's not on the top because we've obviously got this automatic flash and the designers have decided to put it there which is quite a sensible thing I think uh, the camera is basically plastic um, it takes two sorry I've lied there it, just, it takes this battery here it takes a 2CR5 not the cheapest of batteries still easily available but a little bit of a pain but that is just how it is and there we have it a Pentax Z10 let's see how I got on when I used it the first photograph I took was inside the house and I'm on automatic mode and this exposure is absolutely fine I then went outside and up the road round the corner and again this was evening time with a good variety of shadows um, back into the garden and again you can see the um, lovely shadows of the evening sun so at this days I'm really quite pleased with how this camera is performing and again um, I think this I took on manual um, good shadows nice rains of greys the lens I was surprised with how sharp this this is only a bog standard Pentax um, general zoom lens 35 to 80 and it's not the fastest of lenses um, very difficult to read on the lens what the f-stop is it's a uh, f4 so it's fine and the camera it's funny to use in one sense it's a joy to use because it's sharp it's very quick you feel like you are holding a camera the downside about it is I would like more information I quite like I've got so much in the use of aperture priority when I don't have aperture priority I feel slightly lost I would like more information in the viewfinder however as you can see these photographs are nicely exposed they are sharp 
and in one sense if you find one of these cameras in very good condition quite cheaply i would grab it because it is a nice camera to use and i was pleased with this results however they are other pentaxes out there this is a good one as a spare however as i said it has got its limitations thank you very much for watching um, I'm hoping to do a few more in the next few weeks. Again, goodbye for now. Thank you again. Bye.